My name is Josiah Zayner. Until recently, I was a synthetic biology research scientist at NASA. I call myself a biohacker. <sighs> okay. Hello. Today is day one, and... The goal for the experiment is to completely replace all the bacteria that are contained within my body. Oh, sorry. Got a little, like, gas and indigestion there. This is one of the things that does bug me about biohackers, is I don't want people playing with pathogens in their bedrooms. When people take health into their own hands, the risk is really real with this. This is dangerous. Science is stuck in this paradigm, and that means not experimenting with humans, not experimenting on ourselves. Why are people so afraid of something different, some change, some experiment? Before this transplant takes place, I will be looking for a male between the ages of early to mid-20s to 40s who's healthy, hopefully really athletic and attractive and intelligent. It's kind of funny because I've kind of been thinking about this like having a child. <laughs> Good to see you. What's up? All right, so we're probably going to want a couple skin and nasal passages. And try to get all around your mouth, like, yeah, around teeth and everything. It's one of those things where you convince yourself of something, and then when everybody else is telling you otherwise, you're like, maybe this is super dangerous. Oh, shit. Leg or something. So I'm going to get this donation from the other person. Unfortunately, part of that will be feces. Which I'm not necessarily looking forward to. Oh, come on. <laughs> I'm just saying. Oh. Dude, I mean, this is gonna go into my body, so I have to be comfortable with looking at it. <laughs> come on, right? <laughs> I suffer from a lot of gastrointestinal problems like ulcers, irritable bowel syndrome, diarrhea, having to go to the bathroom like every 20 minutes. Most modern medical techniques, they don't work. You know, all the, all the medical doctors haven't really helped. So you just expect me to deal with my symptoms for the rest of my life and do nothing about it? To me, that just sounds wacko. Living on us, probably on every surface, in every orifice, are bacteria. They are almost an extension of you that can be helpful or harmful. Each person's bacteria is different. Your cell phone has the same bacteria that you do. Your clothes have the same bacteria you do. So it's like this moving cloud that comes with you wherever you go. We and bacteria are like one organism.
Oh shit, is it dissolving the capsule? Don't tell me I'm gonna have to take that like a shooter. <laughs> it's not exploding. Oh, there, there's a hole in it now, all right. <sighs> all right, I think we're gonna take a break. Well, while I try to figure out how I can overcome the situation without literally having to <laughs> just put it straight down my mouth. The antibiotics are pretty brutal. Once it enters your gut, you can just feel an immediate backlash. There's no way to qualify this as an actual scientific experiment. It's this one guy doing this one treatment on himself with no controls. The environment was incredibly variable. Not putting your life in danger unnecessarily is, is you know, pretty basic. This guy is doing something that is legitimately dangerous and probably kind of stupid. It's not even a blip on the scientific radar. Sometimes there's this thin line, you know, between being crazy and being knowledgeable. I can't tell. I've always kind of been different, growing up pretty poor. When you grow up on a farm, you have all this freedom, and we didn't have any neighbors or anybody to interact with, so we're used to just like doing whatever we want. And when you get to this environment where people don't do that, you're immediately pegged as, you know, a weirdo. Even if scientists, medical doctors completely dismiss this, still, that experiment meant something to me. feeling pretty good but you're looking for those things that are not just like placebo like oh I feel good right that's super subjective by actually doing genetic sequencing of all the bacteria and comparing them to the donors 
I can see if this experiment works. All right. Oh my fucking shit, motherfucker. <laughs> I can't believe it was so easy just to look at that. Wow, that's insane. So here's my poop, which was in March. 59 and 60 is the donor poop, and you can see the most related sample to the donor poop is my poop. <laughs> that is pretty insane. The experiment actually worked. I don't know why I'm like, feel like crying. That's just crazy. <sighs> oh, man. Do you feel vindicated? Vindicated? Yeah. Oh, no. Like, it wasn't for that at all. I don't feel vindicated. I just... It's one of those things where you're just so moved and impressed by how science works or just how, yeah. It's pretty, pretty beautiful, pretty amazing.